Well, good evening and welcome to Match of the Day, which reflects two matches played on a sunny November afternoon. From the Midlands, the Cannon League Division 1 match between Nottingham Forest and Tottenham Hotspur. Three in the centre again. Davenport, turning shot. Oh, and right at the goalkeeper. And from the north, the Cannon League Second Division game between Blackburn Rovers and Brighton. Knocked forward quickly by Fazakli. Thompson's there. Garner too has the pace and finds Thompson. Surely no. Tonight's top headline is in fact an SOS to Spurs striker Clive Allen. If you're watching, Clive, England need you for the trip to Turkey. So ring us and we'll put you in touch with Bobby Robson. He wants you to replace the injured Paul Mariner for Wednesday's World Cup tie. Well, let's get the action going with Nottingham Forest against Tottenham Hotspur. And while Spurs have the money, the ambition and the support to become champions, Forest might feel less well-blessed, but not when it comes to introducing promising young players to the fray. Your commentator is John Motson. Forest's top scorer, Peter Davenport, is back after a hip injury. Without him, they fail to score. And Davenport is named in the England B squad to face New Zealand here on Tuesday. So our goalkeeper Steve Sutton and number eight Steve Hodge, but their priority is to rebuild Forest's season after Tuesday's Milk Cup exit at Sunderland, where 18-year-old Paul Rayner was sent off. But he keeps the number nine shirt from Trevor Christie, and Johnny Method continues in defence for the injured Paul Hart. Meanwhile, Spurs keep the side which beat Bruges. So Gary Mabbott and Mick Hazard keep out Chris Hewton, who's substitute, and Glenn Hoddle playing in the reserves. Mabbott, Hazard and Graham Roberts are all due back here for that England B fixture, but just one member of the full England squad on duty here today, versatile Gary Stevens. Midfield for Tottenham, substitute right back for England against Finland, and playing centre-back when he scored against Forest last season. Referee this afternoon, Norman Glover from Chorley. of rain in this part of the world yesterday so the pitch will be fairly heavy Spurs in white shirts playing from the right of fourth the start of play Forrest after a bad spell have slipped to tenth and they're also out of two cups now Forrest whereas Spurs are still in both of those the Milk Cup and the UFA Cup Clive Allen Mabbott Falco Gary Mills. This is Davenport. And he was blocked by a combination of Miller and Roberts. As he tried to go between them. So Forrest in a threatening position for the first time in the match. Players near the ball are Boya and Method. Mills to their right. And Method tries a shot. This goes close to Ray Clement's right hand post. So many goals being scored from free kicks these days. Goalkeepers never safe. Not even with a wall. Graham Roberts with the dummy. Halfway through the first half and no score. It's been a somewhat cautious opening, although that could have something to do with Forrest's current form. The kind of match that a goal would do an awful lot to accelerate and that's what Chidozi is trying to do now and Allen's on the near post there where he's always dangerous Fairclough beats him and Walsh looks for Davenport onside now can Roberts cut him off Hodge is trying to get into the centre Davenport's waiting and shoots and Clements scrambles it round the post from Davenport Forrest take the corner quickly, Mills. And now Hodge. And now Rayner. It's 
Spurs still having to pull people back. Rayner again. Fairclough's well forward there. And a foul in the end by Galvin on Bowyer. Wigley. And here's Davenport. And Wigley. Clement's got a hand to it, and that was enough. And Chidozi threatens at the other end. Allen, he's got Hazard to his left, and unfortunately for Tottenham, wasn't aware of such, and went the other way. Two very good minutes of football there from both sides. Tottenham's goalkeeper forced to make two saves in that spell, Ray Clements. The reason for it being that his defence were caught square and the Forest players beat the offside game. And Wigley wins it away for Forest. Davenport against Roberts. Hodge again making a lovely run inside. That was superb from midfield. Beaten out by Ray Clements from Steve Hodge. Corner being left to Wigley. And Fairclough's in there offside against Hodge, actually, who has produced by far the best and most intelligent running from midfield so far in this match. And we've got ten minutes left in the first half and no score. Abbott. Has it. Inside to Allen. Chidozi out on the right. Allen turning. Metpod reading that. And Chidozi coming inside and overrunning, although there were four red shirts around him there. Medhart can't go back. At least not to his keeper yet. European players often have the skill in their own danger area to dribble their way out of difficulties. Falco back to Hazard, and Chidozi is on the run here. That was a nice ball by Hazard. Allen near post, appeals for handball against Gary Mills by Tottenham. Three Tottenham players very near to the incident, all looked at the referee. Nothing given except a corner. Talking point, though. Clive Allen so quick to smell out the chance on the near post. Roberts header, and Allen was close again. Roberts who got his head to the corner. Spurs supporters in that corner probably feel their side have had the better of the period leading up to half-time, but there's no score at that stage in the match. Two teams who've approached the respective Penalty areas quite usefully, but haven't had much devil close to goal. Nil-nil at half-time. It'll shortly be ten years since Brian Clough took over as manager of Nottingham Forest, and his first game was against Tottenham Hotspur. Forest won an FA Cup replay 1-0. Forest have gone five league matches without winning since they beat Norwich at the end of September. So this is a critical home fixture for them in many ways.
Morgan's header. Landsman's bagging on the far side. Offside given. Chidozi. Falco with Method at his back. Perriman. Roberts. And Method. Stevens retrieves. Tony Galvin, who's got better as the game has gone on. Good cross. Allen. It caught a Forest player. Corner. Very good wing play from Tony Galvin there. Beat his man on the outside. Good deep cross. Right for the volley. Deflection. And here's Hazard from the corner. Good effort. Oh, yes. That's Nick Hazard's current form, summed up in one moment. To the delight of the Tottenham supporters, Hazard scores after 54 minutes and has now found the net in the last three matches. And that one, like his goal on Wednesday night, was something out of the ordinary. Goalkeeper Sutton seemed to get a hand to it, but it went in the corner. So Spurs take the lead early in the second half. And if Hazard keeps doing this, it'll be uh, interesting to see just how they propose to accommodate Glenn Hoddle. This is Chidozi. Swain just saving the corner there. Well, only a few weeks ago they were saying he couldn't last the pace, didn't have enough stamina. Then last season they were saying he ate too many milky bars. He's a particularly good footballer beneath all that. Davenport and Rayner up together. Here's Bowyer. Forrest know that they've got to get back quickly here if they possibly can before Spurs can settle on the lead. This is Wigley. Now Mills. And still Mills. And he's gone right along the line. Davenport and Rayner, no! Terrific piece of defending by Perryman, which is more than can be said for his colleagues. This is Wigley. Hodge. Davenport. And Walsh. And Rayner. And Davenport. And a goal by Davenport. Equalising within three minutes. And Spurs' defence, frankly, all over the place. How they allowed Mills to come along the line in the first place is debatable. Perryman got them out of trouble. They got straight back into it, and Davenport finished in conclusive style. So Forrest's top scorer is back with a goal. His eighth of the season, and this match is on the boil now at 1-1. So often a team vulnerable when they've just scored, and the old adage is proved again here. To the delight this time of the Forest supporters. And Allen against Messhot.
Davenport's flick. Rayner. Good early shot by Rayner. Ray Clement's experience telling him where to be for that sort of effort. Somewhere around the six-yard line. And Walsh calling. But Mills looks for Davenport, who's got just away from Roberts for a second. Bowie is coming up well here. And Rayner's in there. And Clements, no, Hodge, no. Forrester Potter's going down to block the effort. And Hazard looks for Allen. Well, anything could happen now. Allen looking for Falco. Suddenly the game has become totally unpredictable. After looking anything but in the first half. And the crowd is sensing it here. Wiggling. Hodge. sense the team's back where they started it's 1-1 but the promise of goals much higher in this second half from the moment they restarted Rayner and here's Falco Johnny Nethod driving it forward. And Hazard lofting it on. And Bowyer. That's a good-looking ball. He saw the wide-open space on the right wing for Wigley. Four Forest players in the middle. Chances here. And it's come back for Bowyer, who miskicked it. And Davenport should have done better. And he knows. Applauding the move. Set up by Steve Hodge. And Forrest may look back on that and think it should have been 2-1. for Spurs, has it, away from Bowyer but not from Hodge, well this is a good battle in the midfield now, oh and it's Davenport, fantastic save by Clements, awful mistake by Miller, Miller knows that Clements almost saved his waist packet there because Davenport only had the deeper to beat after that aberration. Clements reacted as few goalkeepers could there. Corner to Forrest. Hodge. Good turn, low drive. Tried to be turned back by Rayner. Here's Chidozi. And on the break. Spurs have got Clive Allen in a good position. Look at Gary Stevens forward there. And while all this goal mouth excitement is going on, there's a good little contest in the middle of the field between Mickey Hazard of Tottenham and another England B player for next week, Nottingham Forest, Steve Hodge. I wonder which one of them will have the final say in this match. Because we're halfway through the second half, it's 1-1, and it's wide open. And Davenport for Forest 
They've got to try and stay on side here, but he's doing all the hard work himself. Oh, what a good piece of play, and here's Walsh. Oh, and Rainer miscue. And now Wigley. And Walsh again. Thrills and spills at one end, but it could all happen at the other, because Tottenham have got four against four. Hazard. And Allen. And Galvin. Well collected by Sutton. Wigley for Forrest. And now Gary Mills. Forrest will want to keep this momentum going. Offside, though, against Walsh. That was a terrific break by Davenport a moment or two ago when he ploughed through the Tottenham ranks and it nearly led to Nottingham Forest going in front. Hazard well forward again here. An orthodox from Mabbott. He's now got to turn and check Wigley, and he couldn't do it. Three in the centre again. Davenport, turn and shot. Oh, and right at the goalkeeper. Well, he could have had a hat-trick by now, Davenport. There is no doubt about that whatsoever. Clements, one reason why Spurs are still in the match. He was uh, fortunate that it went straight at him, but he's made some good saves since Forrest equalised. And Tottenham are glad of his experience just at this moment back there, because the defence isn't doing itself too many favours. Just went past three of them in quick succession there. Mills got the ball out as far as Roberts. And Tottenham here with eight players pushed forward. Perryman's cross. Galvin was lurking. It's in. Tony Galvin. He made it look rather easy. Steve Perryman drifted the ball diagonally across. They all either missed it or left it, and Galvin collected and found the far corner across the goalkeeper. biggest crowd of the season, over 21,000, swollen obviously by the Tottenham contingent, seeing a very exciting second half here, and it might be worth pointing out that for the last two seasons, this fixture has ended in a two-all draw. But it might not now, here's Galvin. Not such a good finish this time, to the relief of Gary Mills, whose mistake it was. Forest do what Tottenham did to them on this ground last season. Not like that. It's all over, and Spurs have three very useful away points. After a very good second half here, the win set up by Mick Hazard's opening goal. Forrest got back through Peter Davenport, who frankly might have had three or four. But they didn't take their chances, defied partly by Clements, and Spurs went on to win with a goal a quarter of an hour from the end. Good week for their supporters. Progress in Europe, progress in the championship race. Forest with a few things on their mind at the moment, beaten by two goals to one. Well, Forest may have things on their mind, but I'm quite sure Brian Clough understands the realities of the situation. They were the better side today, but the way the cookie crumbled in the goal mouth favoured Spurs. Simply, Ray Clements had an inspired day and Steve Sutton didn't. But as Brian Clough was at pains to point out at the outset, young players learning the job don't always win championships. He knows patience is required for his signets to turn into swans. Bob. One man who's learned that lesson is Everton manager Howard Kendall. He's patiently put together a side that on current performance is the best in the country. Today's 1-0 victory at West Ham was Everton's ninth in a row and extends their lead at the top of the table to three points. 
Manchester United's late win at Leicester puts them above Arsenal on goal difference, Arsenal having dropped two points at home to Aston Villa, and that Spurs' success keeps them in fourth place. Adrian Heath was Everton's scorer today, his 11th of the season. Gordon Strachan, with his sixth penalty since moving to Old Trafford, gave Manchester United a 3-2 win at Leicester with just two minutes left. Paul Mariner returned after injury to score Arsenal's equaliser against Aston Villa, but picked up a head injury and had to withdraw from England's World Cup squad who fly to Turkey tomorrow morning. As we mentioned earlier, Bobby Robson is trying to contact Tottenham's Clive Allen as cover not only for Mariner, but in case the Italian-based strikers Mark Haitley and Trevor Francis are injured playing for their club sides tomorrow. Liverpool defender Alan Kennedy is also out with an ankle injury, while Newcastle's Chris Waddle and Grimsby's Paul Wilkinson both missed the under-21 match in Turkey on Tuesday. Wayne Faraday of Queen's Park Rangers and Dean Coney of Fulham have been added to that squad.